the roots for the spike, I guess you can call them teeth. Yeah, because it, it's it's almost like a giant mouth in the in the stomach. You got that that really good indication of, of deltoid muscle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Draw Sessions. Today is going to be cosmic horror theme. So we will be sketching a creature in the genre of cosmic horror. Many of you out there listening right now, if you're a creature designer, probably know all about cosmic horror. You got Lovecraft, you got movies like Event Horizon. Uh, there's an awesome movie now on Shudder called The Void. Um, pretty much anything dealing with space. And also, I would say, there's a, there's a really good... Well, for me personally, I think it's good. Handheld movie, like the, you know, the found footage, it's called The Outwaters. It's a uh, very, very shaky cam, but it has a lot of cosmic horror themes. And it's pretty cool. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, this is going to be 100% raw, so there's no reference. I am, I'm not looking at anything. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to base the design off of free-flowing lines that come out of my head based on you know my experience, what I've seen. There's going to be trial and error. Maybe things don't actually add up. <laughs> I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, but I think w when it comes to cosmic horror, you can go really weird. And that's the beauty of cosmic horror because uh, when you have dark fantasy, when you have pure horror, you're thinking of demons. And when you're thinking of dark fantasy, you're thinking of mages, elves, uh, even demons in dark fantasy too, but it's, you know, w warrior human skeletons and stuff. But when it comes to cosmic horror, you really don't know what's going on. It's kind of like when you watch The Thing. Uh, that's that's definitely cosmic horror. It came from outer space. It attacked, those of you that don't know the story of The Thing. And, you know, I'm not going to say the whole thing, but um, it, it attacked another alien species, made them crash in Antarctica like 100,000 years ago, 300,000 years ago, and then research vessel or uh, not research vessel but uh russell crowe and his crew found it so pretty cool um all right so <laughs> let's see what's happening here i got a i got a weird crest for a head and this might actually work when it comes to cosmic horror though there are some elements that i believe do work almost all of the time and they are sharp teeth and tentacles especially tentacles. I don't know why, but it just seems like they work in Cosmic Car. Um, I'm going to shrink this a little bit. As you can tell, the the actual sketch is starting off very light, and this is how I begin most of my creature sketches, especially when I don't know what they're going to be like. Now, I will say that getting the eyes established is pretty important. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in some some really round, lifeless, merciless eyes, similar to great white sharks, squid, those kind of sea creatures where when you when you look at their face, it, it, it's like they're void of all thought and emotion. They just want to eat. And what's more terrifying than swimming in a dark ocean or being in deep space, you know, just like with the movie Alien, which is also cosmic horror, and seeing something void of, of, you know, human thought and mercy. All right, so we're going to make sure this uh, perspective is right here. So I'm just, you see how loose I'm keeping everything. This is just so I can sketch through the creature with suggestive lines to give me some ideas for something that I, I might want to keep later on. See, now I'm having this idea that I could probably put in another eyeball. I'm going to put in some fleshy parts up there by the brow just to give it indication that there's, you know, muscle controlling the eye. There's an actual eye socket there. Uh, one of the biggest things about creature design is you, you do have to show that there is structure underneath the skin. And what that means is bony landmarks proving that there's a skeletal system under there. All right, so it's, it's definitely changing the face up. I have to account of everything happening on this side over to that side. Okay. Now you also notice 
that I am not going to zoom in once this entire time. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because when we zoom in, most of the time when we zoom in, we end up becoming obsessed with the smaller details too quickly. And that's something that we definitely don't want to do. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken around that eye because that, that actual eye socket, I want to keep creepy and eerie. I don't want any human factor in this creature whatsoever. If you want another good example of sci-fi horror, if you're into Love, Death, and Robots, the, the show on Netflix, um, season one, there's a, my favorite episode in, in all of Love, Death, and Robots is Beyond the Aquila Rift, which is, I, I mean, the, the creature design in there is just phenomenal at the end. I'm not going to tell you what happens. But uh, essentially, you know, this, this person accidentally enters a loophole or travels way beyond our galaxy, like 157 light years away. Um, so everybody on Earth is dead because of time dilation, <clears throat> but they come across a creature in there that's really terrifying, but is also nice to people. So it's kind of, I'm, I'm not going to give anything away, but it's kind of cool. All right, so now we're getting into a, a face here, and you notice that while I'm, it, it looks like I'm applying a lot of detail on this face, I'm actually not. Let's turn it over here. What I'm doing is I'm just letting my hand and my brain kind of work simultaneously together to lightly put in some shapes here that I think could work. And with all of those lines combining on top of each other, it's actually forming its own texture. So this is what I stress to a lot of just concept artists in general, not just for creature design, but concept artists, is that, you know, when you're doing a sheet of concept art, whether it's props, vehicles, characters, armor, weapons, doesn't matter. If you just let your the lines flow where they may, and you're not thinking about it too hard, you actually prevent yourself from falling into your bad habits. And then in turn, you can come up with some really neat ideas that you could be quite proud of, uh, things that are outside of your box. And like, for example, you know, I'm right now I'm a concept artist for Airship Interactive. And the first assignment that I have gotten for Airship is I'm, I'm sketching a 14-year-old a boy dressed in urban clothing that has to hold a glowing teddy bear. And that's, I won't say anything else, but like what for what the game is or anything, but it's like that's way, way different than what I draw, right, everybody? I mean, everybody knows me for drawing really scary stuff. And here I am drawing a, a teenage boy for character concept art. So it's it's kind of cool. So you'll notice that like as I'm, as I'm putting these shapes together, one of the coolest things that happens is there are shapes that I normally wouldn't think of if I was predetermining what kind of creature I was going to draw. Like, for example, if, if I have my heart dead set on drawing a dragon and I start drawing a dragon, the face and all the lines will try, well, I will try to make everything look like what dragons are supposed to look like. Whereas if I'm just kind of letting lines fall where they may, all of a sudden things are starting to come together in a different light. And I, there are shapes that I don't concentrate on, but are giving me new opportunities. And that's what's really fun about it. So you can see here that I, I'm not shading at all. All I'm doing is just like if I were to do this bigger, I'm just doing this. Like all of these thick to thin lines are uh, coinciding with each other and they're living together. And in doing so, you're gonna come up with a bunch of new shapes in there. It's kind of like what I teach about thumbnail sketching and how you should let yourself scribble. I think it's it's definitely, definitely important to let yourself scribble and not worry too much about what's going on on the paper. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, th this is digital sketching, but what I've done here is I've tried to mimic paper as best I can because I would be doing the same thing on paper. I would be just laying out the the quick thick to thin lines here to show depth with with minimal effort 
And then if I'm happy with the thought and I'm happy with the shape and everything that's happening, then I would go back in with detail. So like with a pencil, I would already be kind of shading just a little bit, but it's, it's not as easy with uh, um, a digital pen. Okay, so now I'm starting to see this head come out and it, it's looking pretty creepy, right? It could probably be even scarier than this, but let's, let's see what happens. So I, I'm starting to add in the little tentacles here. Um, I don't really know if I want to have those things like hang off on the side of the head, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna darken some of the lines around the head. I'm gonna switch the perspective again, and I'm going to darken in the eyeballs and leave just a little bit of, of shine on it, like a little bit of speck light, similar to what we see in, uh, like again, squid, um, even shrimp, uh, you know, what, what else lives down there that, that has black eyes? Like, uh, oh gosh, anglerfish, you know, barracudas, um, electric eels. Although I don't think eels actually have dark eyes or maybe they do. I don't, I haven't really studied enough of them. Okay. So what I'm doing here is, uh, I'm, I'm angling the creature enough to where I can show off the face because I think that the face is one of the most important parts of any creature or character you design, because that's where the personality comes out. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. I'm also focusing on some of the anatomy of the appendages coming out of the head. So even if you're, even if you don't have reference in front of you and you're trying to base your creature off of believable anatomy, one of the key things to remember is imagine that the muscles and the fat deposits and all the skin folds and everything are actually sitting on top of a skeletal system underneath. So when you make certain parts protrude and stick out, make it to where there's a point for that to protrude and stick out. Okay, so all these shapes in here that I've drawn for the head are sticking out for a reason. This is its cranium, so that's obviously going to stick out. I'm making fleshy parts stick out around the eye because the eyeball has to sit inside of the skin. And there's also um, muscular structure to move the eye inside of it. All right, and then on the part of the mouth here, you can see some fleshy parts get thicker. So what I'm doing now is I'm making sure that it looks like there's a tooth root system going in here, and then there's enough room for wrinkles. Okay, so everything has a point. So I'm just going to be kind of adding some shading in here. Uh, and then maybe a little bit on the other side will indicate some of the fleshy part for the eye. I'm not going to get too in the detail on the other side. I'm going to keep it nice and loose because I might be changing some stuff. Okay, guys, now, now's the time to get like really freaky. I'm going to put a really long tongue coming out, but it's not going to be your typical tongue. So I'm just going to scribble that in here like it's coming out from deep within its body. I'm gonna make that that hole, I don't know what else to call it, like that creature hole right there really big. And then I'm gonna put some indications of just some razor sharp teeth coming out here. And then maybe at the end of this mouth, it's rounded like this, but the mouth folds in so you can actually bite. Yeah, that's looking pretty creepy. Okay, so maybe, uh, and this is where, this is where scribbling comes in. Okay, so now there could be like something really weird on the neck. Uh, they could be, this could be like pus deposits. It could be venom stored in the neck. I'm trying to think of how, how the skin and, and the muscles would actually fold around this thing. That is a really freaky mouth. Okay, so I think I need to add a lot of skin underneath that, almost like a pelican. Let's do that. Let's make this like a pelican. Well, we have to indicate some jaw muscle, though, because it has to open, right? So we'll put like a protruding jaw right there to make it somewhat believable that it's actually opening. And then the skin down here, we'll make that uh, chin really skinny. Like that. Um, again, I just want to take into consideration some of the the tooth roots that are happening around here like that 
Okay, and then there can be different sets of teeth too, like really, really tiny razor sharp ones that are just filling the mouth. And I wasn't thinking that before. I'm just, I just want to do it. And that's one of the funnest parts about creature design. You, you, you do want to make it believable from the start. However, at the same time, you don't have to make everything perfect, like zoologically perfect. So it looks like I, I'm going to have to do the center line here because there's some complexities with the mouth. Okay, so it looks like it opens there. That's why the center line is so good. Okay, and then maybe to get really weird, what if the nose is up here? So there's the nose. We don't want to go demon route, so I'm going to make sure that that like I'm, I'm keeping everything like aquatic or just just really weird. Okay, have something like that. It's like that extra fleshy part here. There we go. I'm going to put in some of this. There we go. It looks like uh, my apartment maintenance is doing some drilling or something. So if you guys hear that on camera, I might be able to filter it out. I don't know if you can hear it. All right, there we go. So I'm just putting some more indication around the eyeballs, like shading. Okay, that's a weird mouth. So I have to take into consideration what that skin is doing under the teeth. Okay, if, if this part right here is the actual mouth opening up, Okay, and now we're letting that go. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to stop this a little bit because uh, we have uh, maintenance hammering and then I'll be right back, okay? All right, so now I'm just gonna continue with this uh, mouth here. I'm just gonna indicate very, very roughly where some teeth could show up. Okay, just making a row here and then for the tongue, we could do something really wicked. Instead of just the typical pointy tongue, what if there are parts that come off? There's like, I don't know, little spiky things at the end here. And it splits. That's kind of weird. Weird is good. And you could get away with a lot when it comes to cosmic horror too, because we don't know what's out there. All right, there we go. Okay, and I'm just going to keep this really loose because I don't really know yet what texture I want the tongue to be, and quite frankly, I don't care. All I care about is just getting a, a cool design out, like a cool shape. Okay, the inside of the mouth definitely has to be a little darker. There we go. See how loose I'm keeping all the lines? Um, definitely in here. We'll keep some of, the, some of the tongue part down here where it attaches to the jaw. You definitely want to make darker the lines that are coming towards us that are a little closer. Um, also, the other thing is, because we're not shading anything right now, we're not necessarily worrying about cast shadow, so everything's kind of the same. You know, like, the, the, not, um, not monochromatic. I mean, everything's monochromatic, but everything's pretty much the same vibrancy. Like, there's no shadows, there's no cast shadows because of the teeth any, or anything like that. Okay, so once I have that, I'm going to add in some pretty evil looking eyes. Right there. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. It's kind of looking a little, little creepy. Actually, pr probably looked kind of creepy from the get go, but now it's really looking creepy. Okay, what kind of body do I want this thing to have? It honestly, it kind of looks like a worm to me. I don't know why. Maybe it's the way the neck came down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... I'm going to see what that looks like. What, what, if I, what if I make the body down like this? See how I'm just scribbling this in here? Because I don't know how this is going to go. Okay, that's too much like the tail. So you can also see me mess up in real time too. It's not messing up. It's experimenting. That's what I should say. All right, so let's get rid of this, and then let's say, let's say it's more like a slug instead of a worm. Okay, so slugs, they, they have a longer worm-like body, but they're 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 fatter and they're usually shorter. Okay, so we'll give it like a, a hunchback here. That now looks like an ear, so I want to get rid of that. 
I might shorten the head. Okay. Okay. So herein lies a problem. Uh, I shouldn't say problem. Backtrack again. The antler like tentacles coming out probably will not work. Let's do something else. What if instead of antlers, we have weird appendages that look like kind of like melted wax coming out of the side here. Maybe in the dimension that this creature is from, this is how it hears, or maybe this is the, the bone structure on the inside and it's just kind of coming out of the skin. I think that offers a much more terrifying look. All right, so let's put in some, some wrinkles here. Okay, there's still that little bulbous poison sack. All right, and then the gullet, if you want to call it a gullet. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. So the back of the neck here, I'm going to darken just a little bit so we know where that head is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, since that has to be lighter in the back, it looks like those appendages coming out of the head should be darker. Okay, because again, we're, we're thinking of atmospheric perspective without shading anything yet. So everything that's closest towards us will get a darker treatment. So there's enough contrast with the background. All right, so let's think about what that looks like on the other side. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. You know, we can poke some over here, maybe over there, uh, twirl that one up. We don't want to look like a demon horn, so we're going to kind of be careful of that. Okay, now that we have that, what if we just start putting those weird things coming out all over the place? Then that'll really be cool. There we go. And, and I wouldn't have gotten to this point had I not scribbled those side parts in. This is the other really cool thing about just experimentation and not really becoming obsessed about what you're drawing too quickly. Uh, I'm guilty of that. So instead, I'm just experimenting with these shapes and it turns out that, it, that it's working. Because when you look at this and you're thinking, you know what, I don't really know a creature on Earth that, that actually looks like this. It looks pretty terrifying. Uh, the other thing is like when you're doing creature design and you're trying to think of something completely and utterly original, it doesn't have to be so unique and nobody's ever seen it. it's the greatest thing in the world. I'm like, no, there, there are so many similarities with all the creatures designed in, in most horror movies and games. It's just a matter of, of what you're going to, how you're going to deal with it. Okay. So now, okay, now we're getting into the weird stuff. Okay, <laughs> what if it walks with tentacles right here and there's some tentacles in the side and the front like that? So it looks like it's going to have to grow out of some fleshy parts. But the tentacles have little bony joints. That's kind of gross. So like the, the, the back of the slug creature is actually just going to stop right there on the ground. So it's, if it's in perspective... And then we're just going to push it. So let's uh, let's turn this way. Okay, that could definitely work. Um, okay, so the side things here, I'm going to have to get a little darker. Put in a little bit more unique of shape right there so it's not just the same as all the others. There we go. Maybe add in some ridging. I call it ridging. You can call it biomechanoid ridging, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, to add in some, you know, uniqueness, there's a little hole in the chin right there. Okay. And then maybe here, right next to the teeth, we'll put some ridging coming all the way down and I'm going to start to scribble in some of the wrinkles that might be showing up. Maybe there's some spikes coming off the skin. There we go. Now this creature probably going to need a little bit stronger of an arm to walk. What if, what if there's some claws? See, I'm just making this up as I go. I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> Is it going to work? Maybe. Uh, we'll see. But I'm already putting weird stuff in the back too. More tentacles, terrifying shapes. Okay, this looks like it just crawled out of a hellscape. Maybe that's where it's from, some kind of hellish, hellish world. Okay, uh, oh, oh, look at that. Okay, yep, looks like that'll work. I just put teeth in, I didn't even mean to. 
but it looks like it's happening now. So now I can go right under that skin flap of the armpit, if you want to call it an armpit or a chest or whatever that is. I'll put some, some wrinkles there and stuff. And then uh, I'm going to go in here, maybe curve it a little bit, make them go different directions uh, to add some life to it. Oh yeah, there we go. It's kind of like a wing. And then maybe I'm going to start to put in these little little circles right here to show where some tentacles could be growing out of it. And then they're going to be going underneath that flap and then they're just going to be all over the ground. So you can see that I've I've added in some some really dynamic directions that I could put those tentacles. It it would be very easy to just make this a super boring sketch and I definitely don't want to do that. So even with the end of the tail, instead of just laying it down and having it be boring, what if I curl it up like that? Okay, and, and it's like, maybe it has something at the end of the tail that's curled up. Ooh, like a ball with like spikes on it. So if it wants to attack, maybe it can, or there's like a stinger in there it holds. I don't know. Sky's the limit, especially with co Cosmic Car. There we go. Okay, so let let's uh, let's turn this. Oh man, this thing is so weird. I keep saying weird because I don't know what other word to to use. But we're starting to see that the head is really picking up steam now. I'm getting some some parts in here that are looking like muscles and as you can tell I've, I've barely shaded you know like to me digital shading is when you when you do that just back and forth just like a regular pencil however it's harder with a digital pen because it just doesn't doesn't do the same thing as a pencil does All right, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to shade that far side of the head because of uh, the values you want it to be contrasting with the background tone of the paper okay, and I'm gonna outline that dark there we go now we're talking all right so especially like under the eye the little fleshy parts make that a little darker um, down here there's some cash out there's another eyeball right there okay and I can even put in more eyes too what if I put in little specks but those weren't really eyes anymore all right so another really cool thing we could do to make it look like the the neck is is coming forward is it's kind of like a, on our own neck muscles where by the sternocleidomastoid on the side it looks like you can like suck in the muscles and stretch them out over across your neck like the really thin striations you can see same thing will happen here if it reaches forward we'll still do that poison I don't I don't know if it's a poison sack but I'm just kind of throwing some lines together there. Um, I want to make the gullet just a little darker and then maybe give it an outline. Put some wrinkles on it, so I'm just going to lightly start to pile up some of these lines. And then for the tongue, be creative with the tongue too. Maybe there's some cool little, there's like a cool texture for the tongue that runs on the side of it. And you got to, of course, in perspective, do that on the other side. There you go. So now it's not... It, it, I mean, I know I added these, but it still kind of felt boring. So maybe it's turning. Okay, and then you got these webbed things. I don't know. They could be stingers. I've never seen a tongue with a stinger before. Um, let's turn it the other way. Okay, there we go. So you can see how loose this is, how free-flowing this is. You can have some of these shapes coming up here. Maybe they're the same thing. A weird exoskeleton like a secretion like that uh, I mean I could spend I don't know hours and hours and hours and hours on this but I'm not gonna do that I just want to show you all how I would get started on a cosmic horror creature with the emphasis put on the face right there yeah, let's let's add some more down here um, I wonder what could happen on that fleshy part so maybe there's like, I don't know, there's some extra shapes. Those could be part of the, what secretes the slime if there's a, like a wall of slime similar to a slug when they leave behind. 
All right. Man, this is um, this is kind of strange. I'm not gonna lie, it's a very strange creature. So here, where those tentacles would be, so I'm gonna put in an act actually a tentacle coming this way, and then one then this way. So it's actually a split here. So maybe it does need like a shoulder joint. I don't know with its own set of of muscles. Maybe there's like a peck in there. <laughs> no. Just some cool stuff. There we go. I'm gonna roll it up on the, the side of that weird bulbous shape. These these little lines, these little striations. And then what if there's like some bumps on that thing? Yeah. Because if there's some bumps, then it's like, um, what are those? Are those warts? Are those babies trying to come out? Are those like deadly gas emitters, like, who knows. All right, there we go. Okay, so think of that jaw again. Maybe there's some spiky bits on the jaw. I'm gonna darken up the end of the jaw. It, it, uh, it will draw attention to the overall shape so you don't lose the shape with the background of the, of the paper. There we go. Because there's like a lot of wrinkles happening in there and you wanna you want to keep the darkness at the very tips of things. Like, for example, whenever I'm doing claws, I'm doing tentacles, or I'm doing teeth. Um, it's always good to go back in here. So, like, for example, in the back, on its back, I'm going to darken up that tentacle, and then I'm just going to lightly fade in some more shading, and then the same thing with that one. And then if you go to the teeth, you darken up the teeth, and then you get lighter. So anything, like, pointy... I, it, it's usually a good technique to do. Uh, you don't have to do all of them like that, but uh, for the most of, for the most part, it's a good idea. There we go. Okay, uh, and then, of course, there's going to be like so much more happening underneath the, the belly here. But for the time being, we can we can just imagine what's happening with all the muscles. I'm not really sold on that shoulder area. I actually don't like that. I might have to redraw that. So let's let's keep let's keep the jaw skinny. Okay, and let's not give it a big neck. And then instead, what if the skin opens up and the and the shoulder comes out of that, and then we can kind of bring the teeth back up into there? That's a little grosser too. There we go. So now all the the roots for the spite, I guess you can call them teeth, yeah. Because it's it's almost like a giant mouth in the in the stomach, you got that that really good indication of of deltoid muscle right there. So I would just start building that up. Uh, however you see fit, as long as it does not look like a human deltoid. Because I'm trying to take away all human aspects in this, because it's 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 one of the easiest ways to fix parts of your creature just make it human and it's okay I, I add a lot of human qualities in a lot of my creatures if I want to do something even quadruped but if it has like human characteristics within the creatures function then I'll definitely put human features in the anatomy there we go so I'm just gonna darken up the the claws again claws slash teeth and then I'm just gonna sharpen or not sharpen but darken right underneath that deltoid because this is where it opens up, whatever is in there. There could be like crazy hair tentacles in there. I'm going all tentacled out <laughs> on this thing. So you notice that I'm, I'm keeping the details in one area. Okay, so, so it's mainly this area because that is the selling point. When Whenever you're doing sketches for a client, you should definitely, definitely try that. I just had a thought about the tongue. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that end of the tongue and then maybe extend those shapes. I, I want to keep familiarity in the creature with some of the other shapes that I've been doing. So th these, these weird, almost plant stalk looking parts coming off the creature, maybe they're, they need to be repeated in the tongue also. So I'm just going to add in some, some really cool little like bumps coming out. Maybe those are its taste buds. Um, whatever it eats. <laughs> I don't know what it eats. I'll make that skin 
flap a little darker and put some shading right underneath there because there is some shadow happening. But again, I don't want to shade too much. This is just going to be loose line work. But at the, at the same time, you still want to make the inside very believable. Like if it opens its mouth, that's what's going to happen. Uh, there's, there's actually a functional jaw in there. So there's the nose. I'm going to make some extra nostril holes. I'm just making this up as I go. I'm thinking, what, what would be out there in another dimension? What would we expect to see from a creature in another dimension 300 light years away? Like, who knows? Like, something crazy, probably. Now we really have some cool layering effects going on here with just scribbles going back and forth. Um, I'm going to darken up some of these teeth, the bigger ones, just so you can see what's happening. Okay, uh, the, the end of the jaw, I'll darken up a little bit. There we go. Put some more, just some texturing on the tongue. All right, so back here in the body, and I'm not going to spend too much more time on this just because, I mean, I could. I could spend five, six, seven more hours. The thing is, I just want to get the, the basic design in because I'm going to pretend that I'm doing this for a client. Of course, when, when clients ask for thumbnail sketches, usually the detail level is going to be a little bit more than this because they need something pretty well thought out right away. Um, I'm, I'm leaving a lot of the body parts kind of ambiguous. Okay, so like for example, back here on the tail, I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on the tail. I kind of have this wrapped up spike ball thing at the end that I could use. It's more suggestive than anything just to, just to you know, get excitement going. All right, so once we have this foot, I don't know what to do with this thing. So maybe there's like a giant claw here. And then there's a giant claw here. Maybe it hooks the ground. Maybe that comes out. Maybe that hooks the ground sideways. There we go. All right. Okay, so now uh, there's, okay, I can put in some indication of muscle back here on the back. I'm not really sure what animal to use as reference, that, like in my head, because it's, rounded yet it needs muscle on it so maybe I'll just put a latissimus muscle and some smaller joints where those tentacles are coming out so like five or six different shoulders and I'll just put some indication of, of some long muscles going up into the back and I'll make sure to put some skin wrinkles on there really double up on that texture put in some more wrinkles right underneath that bulbous poison sac I'm, I keep calling it a poison sac it could be an air sac I don't know I love it though. It, this is the, the funnest part about creature design is I have no idea what is happening. <laughs> okay, so we can't forget the other side though. So there's some tentacles over there. Um, you always want to bring a little bit of chaos into your designs. So just make sure that all these weird appendages coming down here are also holding up the creature on the other side. Like that, show that. that uh, claw way in the background over there. Keep things light. When you're working on the other side of the creature, keep things light. Again, there's not going to be any heavy duty shading over there. The only indication that you're showing depth is thick to thin lines. All the lighter lines are in the background, the sketchy loose stuff, and the more tighter stuff is towards the area of the creature that you want to sell the most. And right now, the part that I'm selling the most is this area. Okay, I'm selling this uh, this gnarly looking head. <laughs> here we go. Put in some muscle on the jaw here. Uh, I immediately the the dinosaur that comes to mind is a Kronosaurus. If, if you guys aren't familiar with a Kronosaurus, it's kind of like uh, you know one of those really huge ancient swimming dinosaurs. They were just massive, absolutely massive. There we go, and I'm just gonna put in some lips, some fat folds. There we go. Okay, now we're cooking. 
We got something creepy going on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tighten up a little bit of these areas right here. I minimally I've tried not to well here, how should I put that? I have been minimal in my eraser usage. You've seen me do it. Just little areas where I need to clean up so I can add some new shapes in. Other than that, I'm just letting the shapes fall where they may. Let's see what I can build. Okay, there we go. Show in between here. Alright, there we go. Okay. Some skin folds. It's obviously going to be darker here because this is where its quote-unquote armpit is for that design. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I just want to indicate where the ground is. So I'm just going to darken up underneath this belly. This is where it's touching the ground. I need to make, no pun intended, I need to make it feel grounded right there. Okay, so you can put in some shadow across the ground. And then here, uh, I'm just kind of scribbling in some some shadow lines actually this is the part where i'll do some hatching okay that's where it's touching the ground there's a tentacle coming out here so i'm going to darken the tentacle so you can see it maybe there's like some suckers on the end of the tentacle you see how loose this is everybody this is how you want to keep creature design when you first start something in your head because you don't we have set ideas in our head but we don't necessarily know where it's going to go and that's the beauty of it that's what's going to make you successful when you embrace the unknown when you're doing concepting. If, if, you, if you're a perfectionist, which, hey, we all are at some point, but if you let that control what you're going to sketch out, you're never really going to reach your potential. Everybody's brain is different, and everybody is going to come up with different things. Sure, we're going to look at somebody else's art and get ideas, yes, but at the same time, we have to let we we have to let the creative juices do what they are supposed to do in the human brain and that is create and if you get in your own way with creating that's when it becomes a problem that's when you have artist block that's when you have writer's block any kind of block okay there's enough reference out there in the world to where you will never you should never have block ever it's easier said than done but there's a lot out there. Okay, um, this is looking pretty gross. Darken up here. There we go. Okay. So guys, hope you liked today's lesson. This is how I would start a cosmic horror creature. Now, I could spend another six, seven hours on this. Maybe that could be a, a time lapse or maybe sometime in the near future when I have a really good camera set up, I can do a three to four hour drawing and just have people trickle in and watch me draw and stuff. I would love to do that actually. But um, you know what? Get cracking. I uh, hope you're doing the 500 thumbnail challenge. That would be a lot of fun to see. And uh, if you haven't already, you can join the uh, Creature Design Workshop Discord, which I'll link in the description below. Um, if you like this lesson, uh, like and subscribe it, share it. And um, I can't wait to see you guys this coming Tuesday on Halloween where I will be... Oh, and the voting system is still going, so make sure you vote. Go into the community tab. It's my latest post. Vote which creature you want me to draw for a lesson on, uh, on Halloween, and I'll post it then. So far, the werewolf is winning, but Chupacabra is a close second. So make sure everybody votes. I'll see you all later.